democracies that have been running for uh, for hundreds of years. In that regard, I mean the ideological foundations of the political parties in Nigerians have not been firmly uh, have not been firmly set. But recent events, you know, would even tend to portray some marked uh, difference because. Whereas in the PDP, you can see a wider participation in the decision-making uh, uh, process. In the APC, it's more concentrated in, uh, in a few people. So you can clearly see that, uh, that difference. Ideologically, uh, the distinctions haven't, been, uh, haven't evolved yet, but I expect that it will from time as we go along. But how do you think this cross capitalism will influence politics in, in, in Nigeria, will, will affect politics in Nigeria. Don't forget, you. when you join a political party, you exercise your right, your freedom of association, your freedom to join with like minds. Then when you feel they're no longer like minds, then you, uh, you cross carpet. The, the issue of cross carpeting becomes more complex because you were actually elected on a particular platform. And therefore, it is not longer you just exercising your uh, rights of association. There's a mandate. If you were voted governor, what would you do differently in, in Kwara State? First of all, let me say this. For Kwara State is a first generation state. By that I mean it was created in 1967, at the time in which we had 12 states. Today we have 36 states. There have been three other state creations uh, since that time. In terms of development, Quara is at the lower rung of the ladder. Okay, I would want to bring it back up. I would, and to do this, it's not just about building infrastructure. It's actually developing the enormous human capital that we have, liberating the opportunities moving Kwara away from the politics of all for a few to all for every, all for everyone. You're talking about the poor. The poorest livelihoods are found in agriculture. Uh, what can be done to make agri more attractive for people in, in states such as Kwara State, where, as you said... First of all, you, you, you've got to take a proper, have a proper understanding of it. Agricultural policy, a good agricultural policy should achieve three things. One, create employment. Two, uh, boost food production. Or at least food sufficiency in the immediate farming environment. And third, perhaps raise revenue uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the government. For this to happen, the government has to take a direct and meaningful approach, attention to this, which is that you give the incentives. You, you've got to go back to creating the cooperatives. Um, it is difficult to serve one agricultural farmer that just has like five or one acre or half an acre of land. But if you, you know all the farming communities, you divide them into farming communities and you then have cooperatives in the farming communities, then the, the incentives will come. Um, and you even encourage a lot of uh, young graduates, you know, give them land allocations to farm. You know, thereby you're, you're not only boosting food production, you're actually reducing unemployment and creating a, a livelihood. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of uh, governments don't pay much attention to this because it's not one of those things that grab uh, much media attention. In Quara State, of the projected 2014 revenue of about uh, 124 billion, only about 17 billion is expected to be internally generated. Some amount, of course, will come from uh, the Federation accounts and so forth. If you were governor, how would you improve IGR? One, I think we need vocational centers. You know whereby people can learn a trade, a trade or a vocation. So by that, you create the employment from which you get revenue, and there's also taxable uh, 
that is also taxable uh, uh, income. Um, these uh, government should not be looking towards making money for itself. Government should be looking at broadening the base upon which the local community will thrive. That way, you you, you sort of uh, you boost your revenue. We must take a break now. We ask you to join us again right after this. Come back. Uh, Mr. Belgore, let's, let's go back to uh, partisan politics. Oh, wh what's your take on the Ekiti elections? Well, I think the uh, Ekiti people have spoken. Uh, the Ekiti electorate has always been a very, very, very advanced and independent as regards what they want. If you go back to... Uh, to the 60s, um, where the Southwest was essentially dominated by uh, the Action Group. It was in AKT that you had uh, ANC, ACNC uh, representative, Chief uh, Gilbert uh, Akinete. Um, so AKT has, has always demonstrated that it could uh, stand on its own and be independent of external uh, pressures. And that is what we saw at the last election. I don't subscribe to this view. Uh, again, it's uh, sadly it's APC propaganda that uh, Ikiti have rejected uh, development and they've derided it. I'd say Ikiti voted for uh, stomach in, in infrastructure. I think it's insulting to the electorate and to the people of Ikiti. They made a choice which does not negate uh, the development. And um, we really need to accept it. But I see it as a positive trend uh, going forward. But what is the role of this so-called stomach infrastructure in Nigerian politics? Well, you know what, let's just, it is widely believed that the electorate have to be incentivized, so to speak, to cast their votes. What has been your experience? Well, my experience is that if you want to win people's vote, you've got to be able to carry your people along. And uh, what, applies, what applies in the big cities may not necessarily apply in the rural areas uh, because the needs of the people in the city are completely different from the needs of those in the rural areas. The rural areas, and if, if your electorate, the majority of your electorate is rural as opposed to urban, then as a, a person holding office or a person seeking office, you've got to be able to appeal directly to the majority of your electorate, which is in this case in uh, the, the rural areas. And we can all deride it and say what the electorate is asking for, it's money, bags of rice and things like that. But it actually goes beyond that. They need to feel that the government is touching their lives. In rural communities, you, you get women who wake up as early as five in the morning to walk one and a half miles to get water. That kind of person will react will relate to a government which comes and provides their basic needs. Or a candidate. Or a candidate who comes and provides their basic needs, who pays attention to the fact of this need, to these needs, and it's put some measures in place to, uh, uh, to correct them, to address them. The issue of the, the bags of rice and things like that, and that's just bonus. And that happens everywhere. 